I've mixed up some Windsor Red and Opera Rose. You could use Cadmium Red and Permanent Rose if you don't have those two colours or a red and a pink. Even a Lizarin Crimson would be perfect for this and I'm painting wet on dry with my size 8 round brush. And as you can see here, I really sort of take my time with the painting and I've dropped some water in the sort of middle to bottom part here. Um, just to get some lighter areas and now I'm painting some creamy paint on the edges here really thick and creamy so it's damp into wet to create those dark edges I'm using the size 8 round brush still with the um, Windsor Red and the Opera Rose here so I'm just painting a little bit slightly more dilute now on this petal here to begin with really sort of load your brush I'm just working my way around here wet on dry and what I try to do when I'm flower painting is I try to vary the color mixes in the palette so sometimes I have a little bit more pink and then I'll have a little bit more red or I'll have equal amounts just so you don't get one flat color so I'm just working my way around the edge here just to really define the flower here and I'm just dropping in a little bit more dilute paint in the center here to create light. I've swapped now to my size, uh, I think it's a size four brush, that's it. it's a synthetic brush, I'm just trying to remember. And I'm painting this really thick and creamy pink and red wash around the edges, damp into wet onto the petal here so you can really define the marks. I've gone back here onto the first petal with this really creamy paint. You shouldn't get a background because my paint is, is, is drier, if that makes any sense, to the surface, the wetness of the paper. So because the paper is wetter than what I'm putting on, I won't get a back run. I'm just softening this little bit of paint I applied earlier here with lots of water and just swishing my brush around, just trying to be really expressive and just to get these lovely marks, just hugging the watercolour paper with my brush and now dropping in paint. And again, that's mostly the opera rose with a touch of red wet into wet. I'm scratching now with my twig I haven't used my twig for a while, but I was obsessed with the twigs a while ago. And I'm scratching into the surface of the petal there to create some dark lines. Um, this is permanent. Remember, you are actually scratching the surface of the paper and the paint runs in to that scratch to create these lovely thin lines. And I'm continuing on here with the pink and the red. And I've just actually painted a little bit of ultramarine and yellow mixed together. Any yellow will do. Hands of yellow lights a good, a good one or lemon yellow here. And I'm just dropped that in. In a little bit towards the center this is actually just kind of water here it's like well there's a little tiny bit of pink in there but I think it's supposed to be water so it's just a slightly different way of painting the petal now not going straight in with the paint but just wetting the surface but what I did there is I caught the petal just below it so it ran in so I'm just dropping in now colors wet into wet well wet into that puddle of water and it does create some really exciting effects I'm using the size 8 brush putting really creamy creamy paint on the edges here and just letting it bleed into that puddle puddle just to see what happens isn't it exciting <laughs> so I'm just continuing on here just taking my time obviously the film has been slowed down I don't think I ever take my time really but I do love this style of painting and it's just so therapeutic and it's just such a pretty colour to use, pretty flower. Again, I'm using the twig and just scratching into this wet paint here and the damp paint here as well. I sharpen my twig. This is an apple twig from the garden, but you don't have to use an apple tree twig. You can just use any twig and you can sharpen it with a pencil sharpener or craft knife. I'm placing some cling film now onto the wet paint to create some texture here and to create some veins in the petals and I just want to let that dry off naturally you can't blow dry it because what happens is the cling film just flies away and trust me I have done that <laughs> believe it or not 
I'm painting on a little bit of ultramarine and yellow here and then dropping in the pink wet in wet. My All of my flower, um, all the petals are still wet. So there is a danger that it could bleed, that green could bleed into the pink. So if you're worried about that, let it dry naturally if you can. And maybe the last stages you could actually dry, blow dry it. I'm actually using the size eight brush with some Payne's Grey. I've actually got some dark pink and Payne's Grey mixed there as well all sort of wet into wet and damp into damp and letting it bleed a little bit as well onto the petals the paint is really really thick and creamy so remember when it is quite creamy it doesn't run so much I've just dropped a little bit on the top there as well but this dark really does sort of show off the center of the flower here so remember don't be afraid of the dark and I'm just put a little bit of water at the top there just to have it paler at the top. As you can see, a little bit of the Payne's grey and pink is running into my petal there as well. If it's running too much, just rinse your brush, wipe it on a bit of paper towel and then just lift off let it soak off a little bit just to get some control I'm painting the stem now with some green paint that's the ultramarine and yellow and some of the leaves as well I'm using that size four synthetic brush again dropping in the green and some water to dilute here and there I'm trying to be very expressive with my brush marks here very loose to create that sort of look of that leaf and I'm using my paper towel now to lift off some light and this actually creates some texture as well so the light's sort of coming from the right hand side there and it can be quite effective and now I'm using salt um, on the damp paint here so when it dries hopefully it'll create some lovely textures I'm going back in with my twig to create some more thin lines for veins in the petals so I've given enough time now for my cling film to work. I'm just peeling it off and it's creates some nice marks there. If you want some more definite marks, just leave it on a little bit longer. My painting has dried now and I'm using Alvaro Castanet's um, Neef brush. It's a needle brush. It's a size eight. I bought it on Amazon. I don't use it as much as I used to. This was um, well over a year ago now, but it creates some lovely sort of detail effects. It's like a rigger and a round brush mixed together. So all the paints held in that bottom round bit of the brush so you can actually use that needle point to get some lovely details as the paint flows through it I think they call them reservoir brushes on other sites so you might want to look out for something a little bit cheaper I think I paid about 20 pounds and that was probably two three years ago but um, it is a nice brush actually and I'll put details about that in the, in the description below. I've gone back with my size 4 synthetic brush just to paint in some more darks around this centre here wet on dry and now I'm using a lighter green and that's the yellow with a touch of blue with a tiny tiny touch of pink actually to make it a warmer lighter green and I'm using well you can use a rigger actually I'm still using this Alvaro brush here but just to put in some very very thin lines and I've actually mixed up some white with my yellow to create some lighter lines as well working wet on dry just try to keep it really loose and remember less is more the painting is dry so I'm actually painting in a little bit of dark just at the bottom there just to really bring out that light green texture that I painted and I've decided to add a little bit more pink here as well at the bottom just to create some shadows um, in the flower and I'm just pulling out some of that wet paint with my twig there I'm giving the center a spatter if you're worried about the actual petals do cover them up a little bit as well um, it's just spattering the center I'm adding some stronger pinks now wet on dry just to define some of the petals here and adding water to soften and blend and I'm, what I'm doing here now is I'm just adding a little bit more pink here to define this bottom petal here as well and for those at the top as well just to add another glaze almost just to build up the tonal values and define the petals a little bit more working wet on dry with the opera rose and the Windsor red just blending as I go I'm just finishing off now with a spatter of yellow just to give it a little bit of light and sparkle you could have yellow mixed with white as well 
I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial with the added voiceover and the slowing down of the actual tutorial to make it easier to follow. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my watercolour channel for updates of my latest videos. If you'd like to learn more about watercolour painting, get access to ad-free content, exclusive videos and downloadable sketch outlines, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about that can be found in the top right hand corner of your screen or in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.